Hello and welcome to hey, everybody. Cap, mini catch up super chat Indiana Jones Dial of Destiny. Uh, That's one of right. Our this is some, films. this is some Yeah. Oh wow, Dial of Destiny. Mm -hmm. I like this movie a lot. It's better than Shazam. It would be in the running for worst film of the year, right? Uh yeah. yeah yep. I would say I so. Even, I wouldn't even hesitate on that. Yeah. Definitely. But would it win? Uh, I don't know. I mean, Ooh. Quantum Mania is stiff competition. That's true. Though, yeah. Modoc ain't so bad. <laughs> Modoc ain't so bad. That's People true. are going to be well, so surprised uh, Jones, by that. Indiana Jones has a... It's got a good... Yeah, it's... You know. Mm. It's, it's got some stuff going for it that, that are cool things. I think most of the film adheres to, like, the laws of gravity. But it nailed that. That's um, true. That's true. The laws of depravity. <gasps> uh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, wow. Bum, 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 bum. All right, no, so we got movie. some messages. Uh, and uh, we're going to look into them. We do. We do I, indeed. One thing I will say, though, about Dial of Destiny is that it has contributed to me hating Sympathy for the Devil. I feel it's oh. super overused, and now I just kind of don't like that. To I just want that song to. Well, like, say it was super know, overused still, before that trailer. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah, it was. and now I'm like, oh, Indiana, this is so out of place. It's an overused song that's out of place, so it's like a double whammy. I hate that though, because I, uh, you know, sort of what we free said. Like it pops up in, uh, isn't it Black Ops and in Tropic yeah, Thunder? Black and Ops I like those it. uses. Uh, yeah, but that was before, again, that was before it started to get really overused. Like, automatic before cool time. song. And like, uh, automatic drool song. Oh, no. yeah, we just went there. What's your favorite well, you Rolling Stones there, song? Don't... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know, I went there. I, I'm gonna, I'm going to say, I don't know if this is controversial or not, but my favorite Rolling Stones song is Jumpin' Jack Flash. Okay. And I think that's I don't, I, th I don't know if that's controversial or not. I'm not poo pooing any of their other songs except Sympathy of the Devil. Mine's gonna be boring. but yeah. What is your no sympathy for the devil though? The oh, other one that's well, really famous. Um, that pops up in lots of things. Which one would that be? That would be Painted Black. Oh yeah, that's a neat song. That's another. <laughs> that's another very frequently used song in uh. Yeah, and trailers. Again, Mom and Jawadi did a cover again. of it for Westworld. It was really cool. Oh, okay. I really dig that Jumpin' Jack Flash, though. Mm -hmm. I, I found it through um, a, a Nintendo DS game. Boy, what an amazing console, if we call it that, handheld system. That's oh, the Nintendo DS. What, a, what an incredible game system. Uh, he's good, yeah. I yeah, it, it really love is. my DS. I still do. Does your DS love majors, you? But, you know. Um, we're, we're, we have a professional relationship. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're gonna have a look at what people have been saying. First one says, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Anytime oh, someone exclaims there. werewolf, I reply right here, pointing at my gay actor man parts. That's interesting. Okay. That's really something to think about. That's yeah. really something to think about. You get into that Watch Together. Watch Together goes on the internet. You go onto the internet, Sharks on the internet, Our Shark, Jaws, EFAP, I'm gay actor Michael Douglas. Well, gay actor Michael Douglas makes a good suggestion. I think that, uh... What did they say? Jaws or Jurassic Park? Sorry. Jaws, because Sharks. Jaws? But yeah, I mean, I am I'm, I like Sharks. They're cool. Sharks are pretty... Sharks are pretty neat. Sharks are high tier. They would, uh, they wouldn't necessarily win the the animal competition, but the badass animal competition. They they definitely have a really good head start on a lot of uh, a hammerhead start, if you will. Ooh, a hammerhead start. Yeah. Like I get the shark, but a hammer start, uh, a head start. I gotcha. Yeah, there we go. All right, yeah. Uh, the scene in Liar Liar where Jim blurts out, because I'm a bad father, still hits me right in my gay actor nuts. Gay right. actor Michael <laughs> Douglas's nuts get a lot of action. He's just, he's so passionate about EFAP, but simultaneously passionate about these subjects that I feel like we need more context on, because I'm very confused. Oh, I thought you said he was very passionate about his nuts. Probably is, yeah. Which is fair, because I, 
I feel that, you know, similarly, I am also yeah. passionate about my nuts. They're I'm, very important to me. They mean a lot. I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I always love oh, hearing right. Bill Burr's Philly rant. It's legendary. Something only he could pull off. Motley TV has the best upload of it. I really like that rant as well. I mean, for those, I guess for those who don't know, he did. I think he did a stand up in Philadelphia, and they didn't like it. Uh, and so he just went on this massive rant about how shitty Philadelphia is, <laughs> and it was hilarious. Okay. He's like, "Oh, I got nine more minutes up here. Fuck I, you." I find it, even if I disagree with him, or even if I don't even find the joke that funny, I enjoy listening to him work. Yeah, I like I, the way uh, that he does. I would it. agree. Yeah. And it's funny how he rose to be probably one of the only people I would mind seeing again in Mando. Like, you don't hopefully... want to see Lizzo again? Oh, uh, you know, uh, just, hmm. I was thinking about it. I was like, that's probably She's my second favorite character. Now. She is, yeah. People don't like her anymore. She did mean things to her, her workers or something. Yeah, apparently, like, sexual uh, impropriety or comments or something like that. Oh, damn. I, I, it, will, it will never be funny to me, the fact that she, like, demanded that the people who, like, worked for her and everything needed to lose weight. That will never not be funny. I don't understand how they, like, how does that conversation go, you know, when she says that, do they look down at her and then back up, and then they're like... Are they looking at each other and being like, who's gonna tell her? Yeah, you know? like, does he know, sort of thing. <laughs> that meme is classic. Does she know in this, uh, this case? But, I don't know, yeah, that's, uh, that's made her drastically unpopular from what I have seen. It has ruined her stellar reputation. Mm-hmm. We have the IP, and Harrison is still technically alive, so let's squeeze this while we can. Lucasfilm, probably. If every, if ever a movie deserved to fail. There's a couple of those, but, uh, I mean, yeah, this thing was cooking for what? Like, half a decade a while. or something? Yeah, a while. They just wanted to get that, that shit that out. That explains <laughs> its incredible quality, because of how much time they, <laughs> they really spent worked to hard. make it great, yeah. I mean, it really... It really is fascinating at this point that if, if you get told, yeah, this movie's been worked on for a long time, that doesn't really tell you anything as to whether or not it's going to be better or worse. Well, yeah, it means it'll be worse. <laughs> is what I mean, I'm, now, what I'm nowadays it seems like the longer it is, it's not that one person got to work on it for a really long time. It's that lots of people worked on differing versions of that film for a very short amount of time each. Yeah, like it was in development hell. Yeah, and then it keeps getting passed between writers and directors, and everybody kind of has a different idea of what the film is going to be, and portions remain, but portions get changed to the point that the final product ends up being, like, very incoherent. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Dialysis of Dysentery. Oh. Hey, oh, yo. Wow. Sometimes I prefer, like, simpler, silly ones, like Diaper of Destiny. Like, hey. Diaper of Destiny because he's old. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it depends. Right? Also, the movie shit. Also, the movie shit. It's multi-layered. That's yeah. oh, it is multi -layered. the best ones always are. Rags looks very German today. Oh, thank you. I do look very. I'm a strapping German lad. Oh. Jack Saint Which made a response a to, to Shad's take on the Mario movie, and let me tell you, he hasn't changed a bit since the last EFAP stream four years ago. Well, Chad's been on since then. I think they mean Jack Saint. <laughs> oh um, my goodness! the The reality of that shit is that I don't even want to talk about whether or not Mario was woke. Okay, they can have that fight if they want it. I, uh, yeah, because it, yeah, because I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it wasn't. Stop talking about it. I, might just... I, just, I don't know what to do with that. Mario is woke or not woke? <laughs> Get me out of here, please. Like, it feels like here. we were the only podcast on. On Earth, that talked about how meaningful the Brotherhood like elements were, how they wrote I it, know, how they could have done it's better, crazy. I and can't whether or not that. you know, like, was it supported or taken away by the fact that Luigi didn't have time? It's, it's all these different aspects mm -hmm. of writing. It's just like, yeah, well, but I, mean, I am, I am interested in talking about the Mario movie as you know, being a being a big fan of Mario as a as a series, like, and talking about what kind of film it was and what it could have been. It's our fault for no, 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 not no. realizing. See, when we were when we we're like, let's talk about the story improvements or detriments that the remake of Dead Space gave, and then everyone chats like, "Hey, talk about the ugly women." <laughs> like, uh, oh, no, I don't want that. Stop it. 
Every uh, controller nowadays should include a bottle of isopropyl alcohol and compressed air. So says gay actor Michael Douglas. Is that beneficial? What, what does isopropyl or alcohol does that do? Hurt? I assume it's like a cleansing clean? thing or and compressed air. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right? it's useful when you want to get rid of them bits and bobs that get stuck between things and stuff. Dust times, yeah. Sure, everyone should have cleaner controllers. I agree. I agree. Fringy, I saw the look what's the cat dragged in joke and the one with the dog in case there's more than one reference. I lost my mind. Hi, Rags. I think that was Hello. the Simpsons. Simpsons one we, we recommended. Yeah, because Homer... Now I'm just thinking yeah. about the come crawling back, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I still... crawling back, eh? That joke's great. <laughs> It's just funny that there's a door specifically for people who are coming back to get their job that makes them crawl through like dust and dirt yeah. on their hands and knees. And when they get to the other side, Mr. Burns is waiting for them. <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones and the Trials of Locked Balls. I remember. Oh my goodness. Lock Balls. I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I'm here to defend... Hey. Five Nights at Freddy's on an objective scale. Aside from the third game, the gameplay that is there is pretty solid for the low price minigames. Uh, um, is it? Isn't I mean, Terraria like $3? To <laughs> Terraria is on, I think Terraria at base is like 3 or $4 and it often goes on sale. <laughs> like, it often goes on sale. And that's a game that you could probably play for like Well, I mean, forever. Hollow Knight, Hollow Minecraft. Knight I believe is $15. And that's, that's like, that's an amazing game. It's like 15 bucks. Yeah, you Final can get the I mean... game for like 5 bucks, tip, like routinely on sale. I just I just remember like Five Nights at Freddy at Craze and everyone was like, it's so amazing. And then you play it and you're like, what? Why? I remember uh, when Slender was really popular. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about like the like original attempt? Or yeah, I say the, original. The, but... the game where you walk around in the in the forest. To get the pages, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember they made Slender: The Arrival, nice. I think, yeah. which um, oh, I played I and no I didn't idea. hate it. I, I actually okay. thought it was okay. Like the, I think the way that game works is, um, you like start in a forest, uh, but I think you're you're fine until you get to the house, and then uh, I think the objective is like close all windows and doors, and uh, they have like a sort of built-in. I remember thinking, like, good of them. I don't think it drags you to the visual, but if you look outside at the right time when you close one of the windows, you can just see Slenderman in the distance. And then, like, I think there's, like, a lightning strike and he's slightly closer, and so then it's, like, the lights go out in the house and you need to get to the garage to restart them sort of thing, and you hear some creepy things. That was that sort of... That, that, that was, like, crazy popular kind of horror back in that age. Because it's technically walking simulator, right? <laughs> There's not actually a lot going uh, on. I mean, I remember that the Slender game was just that you walk around in the forest. Well, that one, yeah. You, and yeah, with and the key was you like, get, don't look at him, I think, right? Is that the... Yeah, you don't look at him and run away. Yeah. Wasn't there something about, like, you had to take pictures with a camera? Wasn't that something about it? That cry of fear? You had to either... Were... No, I not cry of fear. I think, I think this well, was Slender Man. Outlast wasn't Outlast. Was Outlast the one was the, the video, video camera, camera yeah. I, I don't know, I know but that. I I think I'm distinctly talking about I think Slenderman had a an element where you had to look through like a camera or you had to take pictures or something like that. Well, I um, remember the original game was you, you just walked around with a flashlight and you grabbed the like the the drawings on the Yeah, like, like the eight piece pictures of paper on the tree. scattered throughout the map in yeah. a forest, but they made so obviously you, a you bunch of them after that. that. It was popular. Well, yeah, that was the era of those first person horror games. Booktastic, and they did it wonders for the Let's Play industry. Um, yeah, I mean, that was the genesis, really. Yep, go on. Whoa, la, 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 la. Yo, before we dredge through the death of Indiana, watching Asteroid City, good rat, made me realize something. Scar Joe hasn't taken a physical acting role since that wretched Black Widow movie. Crazy to think that was two years ago. Uh, what do you mean? Oh, well, I mean, you can't clarify. With physical actor? Well, I guess non-voice like... non actor, I guess. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, yeah, but she hasn't done that much, because she did the Isle of Dogs, right? That was, she was in that one, I think. Also. Uh, when did Isle of Dogs come out? Uh, that came, well, I think that came out, like, a few years ago. 
Well, yeah, they're talking about since Black Widow. Is that surprising, though? Uh, sure, yeah. Okay. I, I didn't know her to be somebody who did a lot of voiceover work. Huh? What do you think I, they we're said? Talking about, about, we're talking about who? Scarlett Johansson? You said... What was it? Can you read the question again? The person's saying, it's really surprising that Asteroid City is the first physical role she's had since Black Widow, meaning non-voice actors. Oh, like that. Okay. I think I agree. That is surprising. Okay. Uh, and because Black Widow was 2021. Asteroid City is so... 2023. They um, usually don't I go... what she's been doing in the meantime. Yeah. Well, she's got three oh, you, oh, voice acting what? roles. Say... Oh, okay. okay. I gotcha. But ah. two of them are shorts, so you'd think that she would have uh, hmm. maybe filled okay. time with some other stuff, but hey. What... Man, she's in so Scarlet... many movies I like. She played Ka in the Lion King live action? The Jungle no, Book? in the Jungle Book, yeah. The Jungle Book, uh, yeah, yeah she Lion did. King for she weird did. reasons. Okay. Which is weird, because... Uh... Oh, who did his original voice? Oh, I, I don't know the guy's name. It's such a distinctive voice. Um, and, uh, I think Bill Murray Sterling played, Holloway uh, in uh in the remake. Sterling Holloway, interesting. I haven't seen the Jungle Book remake. I heard it's fine. That's the one that people say is the good one. It's crazy, right? All of these, and there's the good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mowgli meets Ka. The Jungle Book, 2016. That's seven years ago. Yep. Days Sir, like... are you? Are you a, um, who do you prefer? Do you prefer Ka or Sir Hiss? From, uh, Robin Hood. I don't know. I don't think I have any strong opinion on the matter. I like them both. I think they're, are they both voiced by the same guy? No. Sir Hiss is Terry Thomas. Okay. Alrighty. Daedalic Entertainment, who made point-and-click adventures before Gollum, have now ceased development of games. From now on, they'll only be a publisher. Yeah, well, um, mm -hmm. I heard that some of their games were actually uh, decent to good before this, so... Hey, uh, choose your projects wisely. Yep, it's going to take a while to build the reputation of that company back up, if you can at yep. all, because everyone's going to be like, wait a minute, are those the guys that made the Gollum game? Maybe just start yep, a new company. <laughs> like it's... Honestly, yeah, at this point, just... Well, I mean, just... it's, it's like what happened with uh, Forspoken. The developers shut down and got folded into other Square Enix, like, internal studios. Imagine they did, like, a Hello Games and just developed Gollum for the next five years and turned it into, like, the greatest game of all time. <laughs> yeah, we get yeah, another No I mean... Man's Sky, but for Gollum. <laughs> yeah. No Man's Sky is such an exception to the rule, though, isn't it? It would be so funny, It though. really is. Because, I mean, I mean, remember, Bioware, big old Bioware with hundreds to thousands of, of devs, uh, like, announced the intention to make a, like, a big 2.0, you know, anthem uh, overhaul. And then later they're like, they nah, yeah. no, nah, we're I think they up. did, like, <laughs> didn't they do, like, one kind of update? Uh, or something so like that and then they're like, oh, they did they did a few of the initially promised updates that you get with like your initial roadmap you know the one that you get at launch and then they said yeah we've got like a an incubator that's working on a big overhaul for anthem i think it was called like anthem next it was basically yeah like yeah. the 2.0 and then several months later they just said nah we're not doing that we give up i guess they're just they wasn't... didn't say we give up but they gave up <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they gave up. They just came out one day and basically said, yeah, we're not doing it. There's going to be no mm -hmm. more updates. No, they're just going to move on to something else. They're yeah. going to cut their losses, which, I mean, maybe that's not the worst idea from a business standpoint, but it means that you certainly can't do that again. Like, if you do a live service game and then you give up on it, um, it's really hard to do it again because the big promise of a live service game is years and years and years of support. If you quit, like, on one of your games... <laughs> that it makes it really hard to sell people on it next time. It's like the same problem that Sega had with their consoles, you know, when they did the Saturn and then the 32X. By the time the Dreamcast comes around, are you going to support this for five, six years or two years? You know? I wonder what, um, because when, when we talk about No Man's Sky and it's, you know, Road to Redemption and, you know, where it's at now and how positively people view it, what made it worth that kind of effort might have been, I mean, it, to, to look at it in a more 
I guess a more pragmatic and clinical kind of angle. It started off with such a huge install base that I don't think Anthem ever had. I don't recall Anthem being like, oh yeah, everybody downloaded it and it was pre-ordered to high heaven and everyone had it and it was just turned out to be a huge disappointment. It felt like it was just one of those, you know, another one of those games that just sort of happened. It didn't do um, well when it came out, but the thing is, is that some games that didn't do fantastically when they came out can recover. Warframe can, yeah. didn't do that well when it came out at first, but now I think that game has been supported for 10 years at this point and it's still healthy. Um, yeah, I, I think it's constant good updates keep people playing it and talking about it. Um, and even when you have games that, I mean, oddly enough, I think I, I mentioned as an example Guild Wars 2, which is about 11 years old now, and no one, it, rarely does, does anyone, is there anyone ever like, oh, the, the, like no one thinks about it, but it's been going on for 11 years now, and it's at its biggest point, like they have more developers now than ever, and um, it's just still going, but no one really talks about it. You know, uh, so some games, they just persist and they keep going and they're able to stay successful, even though they're not like in the public, you know, I guess I, for the most part. Um, well, it's just you need enough people playing and spending money to support, you know, continued development. It doesn't need to be the biggest thing in the world. Yeah. Um, which is strange because, you know, even as big as WoW is, however big it actually is now, I'm not certain. Well, we don't know I anymore, like right? No one ever... I feel like no one talks about it for how big it is and how prominent it is in the MMO space. It seems like it's so rare that people talk about World of Warcraft. I not mean, as much as you'd expect, old, right? maybe. 20 years old at this point, so maybe not that's not so bad. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, also, pardon me, I need to use the loo. <laughs> Gross. I like the movie, but it missed the magic of Lucas and Spielberg. Opening scene was great. Why was Indy scared of bugs? That part was weak. Um, why do people keep saying the opening scene was great? Freaking why? I don't know why people say that. The opening scene was pretty bad. Um, it, okay. it really did set a tone of wow. We're in for some. We're in for a pretty bad film. Like I don't know when the bomb fell in the like the the tower at just the right place to save his life. You know, yeah, I, th I think at that point I already knew, like, ah, it's over. Like, this film is probably going to be riddled it's with like these the kinds of... It's the first thing that happens, you're like, oh, great. It's the first thing, it's not even, like, we're not even up to the first action set piece proper. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people are focusing on, like, well, the train itself, that portion. It's like, dude, the big conclusion know. of the train that is was... that they accidentally all die to their own gun. Okay. Yeah, exactly, like... And and then of course the fact that uh, Mads Mikkelsen gets smacked in the face, gets sent flying off the train, and he's just fine. Yeah, that shit was insane. And you just wonder why? Why do they make it that way? <laughs> why did you do that? I don't know. Yeah, you, you could know, even have did Lucas... had uh, Indy duck the other guy warn him, and then Mads Mikkelsen realize and jump off because he knows that's his only option. You know. Yeah, that would have been interesting, but, uh, yeah, I, again, like, why did they make the worst choice? They didn't even give him a scar, he's just fine. <laughs> like, <laughs> I thought he was gonna come back with a scar or something. Everyone it's thought like, that, nah, it's, but no. It's as if he didn't get smacked off of a train moving at high speed. Don't get it. Never get it. What a murderer's row of a lineup. Yeah, we kind of did murder the film. Huh. But is it murder when it's self-defense? I don't know. Well, I mean, they're describing, like, a murder of crows, like, a Yeah. That there was a big old... Sure. But how, how big is a murder of crows? I figure that two or three crows isn't enough. Um, I'm gonna guess five or more, and you get yourself a murder. But really, I have no idea. Mm. How many know, yeah. is a murder? I'm not even gonna say of crows. How many crows make a murder? To spot a murder of crows, naturalists agree that you need to see at least three crows. Huh. Oh wow, that's a pretty that's a pretty small group. Okay, yeah. You know it's bad when Angry Joe shits on the movie. Well <laughs> the hard one to like. Now I see it, but you know, there's plenty of people who still can. It's totally fine. All right. Dude, I remember seeing a few people saying, Yeah, no, it was fun though. You know, like I don't know why people are being so harsh. It's like a fun movie. The fact that you couldn't even that say it was a good movie is interesting. What movie? The dial, the, movie that we're talking about, the dial of Destiny. 
Oh, yeah, that movie sucked. Oh, you didn't like it? And I think, no, uh, can't say I did, honestly. Where did it end up? What, because this is something that I guess is now, you know, weeks removed from when it released. Where did Indiana Jones end up uh, landing in terms of its box office growth? So right now, $370 million with a budget of probably $300 million. Dial of Destiny? Dude. Yeah, it had a $300 yeah. million budget. I think it needed to make uh, about $600 million to break even. I saw That's a probably thing, though, about how uh, Dead Reckoning only got to $500 million or something, right? Yeah, Dead Reckoning is also, and it's been over a month since it came out, so the amount of money that it's going to make, it's more or less made at this point. Uh, you know, I find, I find it so interesting that so many people keep saying they should have pushed it away from Barbie and Oppenheimer. If anything, before any of those films have come out, the assumption probably should have been that everybody should have moved out of the way of Mission Impossible. Yeah. Because, like, those films have been pretty consistently successful. I think uh, Ghost I mean, Protocol... The last one made, like, 700 800 million? million. 800, 800 million. million. Yeah. And uh, Ghost of money. Protocol and Rogue Nation made, like, 700, 800 million as well. Something like that. Um, compared to something like Oppenheimer, like the fact that Oppenheimer has beaten in the uh, has beaten Mission Impossible is that that should be a surprise. That's fascinating. That shouldn't actually, be, that's yeah. not a foregone conclusion. Yeah, it's it's it is fascinating. As far as I'm concerned, it's a good thing. Uh, <laughs> looks I agree. like Oppenheimer has made 650 million, which again for a R-rated three-hour-long biopic, it, quite bring, good. it gives me hope. It makes me happy. I know many... Have you seen it, Mahler? Yes. Oh, what'd you think of it? It was really good. Yeah. All right, then. Me too. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right. Moving on. I didn't think the Barbie one was that good, though. Um, mm -hmm. No, I have it on good authority that the Barbie movie will stand I, I really don't see what, what those two had to do with each other, you know? I just didn't see the, how they connected, but I understand. It's fine. Well, I think, like I said, I think it's the same thing that happened with Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal. It's a really funny mashup of two very disparate things releasing at the same time. Like the Soul Patrol, Patrol Animal Crossing. Uh, yeah, except that I don't think that one's going to work as well. No. <laughs> Was like, it Doom, cause... Doom Crossing, and uh, uh, whatever well, it was? But yeah, I really enjoyed Animal, the memes Animal were top Crossing, tier uh, with like Isabella and, were, um, and, uh, and Doom the Doom guys. Slayer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they well, made a great think, pair. It's it's really I think I think that one works really well as a contrast. Um, wait, so, so what what were you saying? Saw Patrol. So is it that a, a Paw Patrol movie and Saw Ten are coming out around the same time? I think they actually got one of them moved to come out the same day, and then everyone was like, "Uh oh, we actually try are we seeing someone trying to force it like a company." But I mean, but uh, th there's there's got to be like no overlap. There's like no overlap in the kind of person who'd be seeing Saw and a like a Paw Patrol movie. Yeah, because when it comes there, there to Barbie and Oppenheimer, yeah, they're both for adults, and they're different kinds of movies entirely, so they offer different experiences. So you could go to the theater and see both. I don't know who, who would, who, I mean, maybe someone who has a kid will be like, I'll take him to go see Paw Patrol, and then I'll go see Saw. Yeah, but the point of the double feature is that you, you do both. You, you, you see both films. That's why Barbie and Oppenheimer complemented each other. A lot of people saw both movies that weekend, which is rare. Not many people see two movies on one weekend. But it was funny because I remember I... the memes about, like, Barbie says, you know, you ever think about death, and then it just cuts to, like, Oppenheimer staring into the <laughs> distance, like... Well, yeah, it's, 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 that's, that's just funny. It's the same as, yeah, like, when Isabel and, uh, and Doom guy just start fighting demons. <laughs> like, it's fighting them together. It's amusing. And again, I think that there's, you know, obviously, like, Animal Crossing is, like, an all-ages game, but a lot of adults play Animal Crossing. A lot of adults who themselves might have been interested in playing, like, Doom Eternal. And even then, you know, Animal Crossing was tremendously more successful than Doom Eternal. You know, so, Barbenheimer is a very unique sort of phenomenon. I know Metal mentioned yeah. it. But have any of you played Outer Wilds and its DLC? Would love to know your thoughts and maybe a breakdown someday. Not yet. I haven't seen it yet. Or, I'm uh, sorry, played hey it. I haven't played it yet. Nor have um, I. It's on my maybe list. I think I've got it on Steam. I just got to get around to it. It highly recommended, that one. Yes, yes, it does. A lot of games to play. Mm -hmm. It's high in my list of things to play once I'm out of my current loop. 
I'm gay actor Michael Douglas, and I get through my gay work Hello. nights much easier whenever I have an EFAB to listen to. Love y'all's work. Oh, that's oh, that's nice of you, yeah, gay actor great. Michael Douglas. Thanks, gay actor Michael Douglas. Happy to help. I loved you in Quantum Mania. I guess. You probably you, you guys seen Wall Street? No, I don't think so. No. I gotta make you guys watch Wall Street. Okay. No, it's, it's got Michael Douglas in it as uh, Gordon Gecko. It's one of his most iconic roles. And then he turns up in the one with Shia LaBeouf, right? Uh, yeah. You know, Donald Trump shows up in that one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good old Donald. They, they made it like a, they made it like a barber shop. And then Donald Trump tells uh, Gordon Gecko that he would look great with a comb over. Okay. <laughs> now we need an update to the South Park joke of Indy being graped, except it's KK instead of George and Spielberg. Kinda, yeah. I'm surprised they wouldn't have taken the opportunity to do something uh, with that. Well, I mean, we'll, we'll be getting a new season s sometime later this year, I imagine. Because it just feels uh, like it's it's uh, ripe for storytelling and to sort of update the commentary, whatever they have to say, you know? Well, yeah, like, what do they think? Because, I mean, remember, they also did the, the Raiders parody with uh, Spielberg and Lucas as well. The one where they were remaking uh, all of their old films, like, they replaced uh, the Blasters with walkie-talkies. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Longoids. Watch Sam Rockwell in Moon as a lonely, lonely lunar technician who makes disturbing discoveries about his job as retirement looms near. Rockwell alone with a great script. Also, hi, Fringy. Hey, uh, I need to see that movie. Have either of you seen it? No, no sorry, I, I needed to tend to something. Well, see what movie? Moon. Uh, I saw Moonfall. No. Highly recommend. <laughs> Um, we should but uh, get that moon. done sooner rather than later. Moon is very good. Okay, I've not yeah. seen I, Moon. What is it. what is this movie? Better the less well, you know I mean, now. The less you know, the better, right? Yeah, don't go discover things. You're right. It's good that you haven't seen All right. it. All right. All I know is that it's called Moon. I don't know when it came out or who's in it or what it's about or if it's about anything. I don't know. Yeah, it could be about nothing. Could it could be it about could nothing? It could be an episode of Seinfeld. Yeah. Ohio. It's the show about nothing. Ohio Stephen and the Hatred of Old Folks. Ohio Stephen. Wouldn't it be Jake? People always say Jake whenever they do the... Thanks to Mark Hamill. <laughs> that one interview <laughs> lives on forever. Uh, anime EFAP when? Oh, you know. What does that mean? Any day now. If we... If we, I mean, if a movie comes out that we really like and we're really interested in talking about and it happens to be an anime... Sure. There you go. If that happens. But I'm not gonna... I am not going to track down an anime, you know? Wow. Yeah, have, you, have you bigotry. watched One Punch Man? Uh, Rags, have you seen that? I have not, but I've heard that it's very good. Rags would love that. Wow. Easy. We'll have to make you watch One Punch Man, yeah. Yeah, I've heard good things from... I've heard good things from uh, I... Mahler and you. So I believe it. But when random people tell me an anime is good, I don't believe them. I, I, think you'll, I think you'll really like Moomin Rider. I think you'll like I'll, him a lot. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to watch One Punch Man. I've heard good recommendations from people I trust. One Punch Man is really great. It really is. Now I'm just thinking about all of the best moments from that show. <laughs> like, it's so great. Isn't there a name for an anime? There's an anime genre. I forget what it's called, but it, that it's self-aware as anime. That's, it's one of those. I can't remember what name it's given, though, because there's loads of categories in anime that make people familiar with exactly what kind of genre they're getting, but that's part of probably why I love it so much, is that it makes fun of anime. Uh, let's see, so... What kind of... I'm trying to find out what it's called. Um, uh, shoujo? Shujo? Is that Maybe. it? What does what they say the definition of that is? Um, let's see. The Art of Being Self-Aware. Gekan Shoujo Nozaki-kun is a shoujo series about the author of a shoujo series. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Maybe that's referring to some... I don't know. Uh, animes that break the fourth wall. Be self-aware. Uh, yeah, I don't know. 
Oh, Even Google says Shujo refers to young girls, often magical girls like Sailor Moon, and Shonen respectively means young boys from about 12 to 18. Many of the most popular anime in the world fall into one of these two categories. Hmm. Then I've, I've definitely heard Shonen. That's what that's the genre that like Dragon Ball Z and mm -hmm. uh, like uh, One Piece and all of that. That's like one of the most common genres I think of anime and manga. Um, well, I don't know. Yeah, well, there's probably a name for it. Someone will know. Probably. some. I'm sure there's a... It's like German. There's a there's just a, a name for everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, also, Sean from Actual Justice Warrior crossover when? I don't know. I think that's more of a political, but perhaps media discussion can happen at some point. Who knows? Um, Bringy, have you finished TOTK yet, and what are your overall thoughts on the game? I've not finished it. I haven't even completed the first uh, temple, but I really, really like it based on what I've played. You gonna go back? Uh, I probably will once I finish Pikmin 4, and I'm real close to finishing that game. Mm-hmm. Wow, a Canada Day EFAP? Excellent. Didn't even know it was Canada Day. All right. That's like a couple of days removed from uh, Independence Day, I believe. Neat. Instead of watching Dial of Doodoo, -Doo, watched Raiders last night. Pretty awesome. When's the next time any of you are going to uh, go on Sitch and Adam? Oh, well, we would have in the time of... I think so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I was Whoa. on once, and Mahler was on. Mm -hmm. um, I think today, Short Fat Otaku is on theirs. Um, I'm actually going well, through that right now. Well, today's not going to mean much to... <laughs> What does today mean, you know? Well, he's been oh. on a couple of times, so it could end up meaning a oh, lot. Okay. I, I'll be more specific. Ten hours ago, uh, <laughs> ah, Shortfire yeah, Taku was specific, on uh, yeah. Yeah, their thing, so yeah. that should help narrow it down. Yeah. Indo-Pacific Johnson and the Diabetes of Despotism. All right. Well, I mean, wouldn't it be like Midwest Jones? Like, it's 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 the... like You know what I mean? Indiana well, way, is not... Is the joke like, that you get as far away from whatever his actual name is, uh, but in the same vein? That, I don't know. That, it, well, I, I yeah, I can see the through line there, but well, I, I find the name Midwest Jones funny now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great Lakes Jones. They should make an indie movie show. Uh, Deaged. That opening scene was cool, man. Nothing will touch the trilogy. I have to watch it again. Why does everyone? Why does everybody Stop think it. it's good? The <laughs> intro was not good. It, was really it had bad. insane levels of plot armor in it, and Indy only survived due to incredible and stupidity all... of the Nazis. And Indy was stupid in that scene too. It was all CG I hated goo. it. All of it was CG. It was. Yeah, it was exactly. all green screen nonsense. There wasn't a touch of reality to any of it. And he was de-aged like him. And the... what I'm trying to say is like there's goo everywhere. It's not even just like regular goo. Bad goo. I agree with you, Fringy. Andrew Tate is the correct next step in human evolution. That's... You said that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a strong... That's a strong position to have, Fringy. Mm -hmm. but well, it would passion, be if that was... Know, but it's, it's that random person's thing that they just said. Continental drift is not an issue. The solar system orbits the Milky Way at 828 thousand kilometers per hour that's 130 times greater than the radius of earth every hour so the solar system moved 43 billion kilometers in 2181 years it doesn't yeah, have anything this... to do with continental drift though. are they saying that that's the true concern versus continental drift uh well no. I, think, I think the point they're making is a problem that has to be dealt with a lot in time travel stuff is that you're not you, it, it can't just be that you're traveling through time you also have to be traveling through space unless because it's through. locked to the earth's core i mean but that but again relative to what it's always it going to be relative to something to the earth the earth's, earth's core, core is what you just said but uh the, so oh so it like it would always be attached to this something from yeah the earth's like core. a a longitude, Shorter. latitude, um, or a, a position on the planet, you know, something. It, it would be nice to get, I can, without them mentioning it, I'm fine, I'll go with it. But it would be but, nice I mean, if, if they had that little touch If it was longitude touch of, and latitude, it would always be in the same, like, longitude and latitude would remain consistent even if the continents move. The only problem would be if you were measuring relative to the continents, not relative to... Sure, that, that would only matter <laughs> if you're... 
the the continental drift would probably only be an issue if you were traveling extreme distances in time. Uh, it would probably not account for like the well, vast majority of time travel done. I mean, the observation about the way the continents move is that over the course of like twenty or thirty years, it's minimal. Like the movement over over thousands of years, it's it's barely anything. Like it takes a long time for the continents to move so much that they start to look different. With remembering though that yeah. all of that was bullshit, right? That didn't have anything to do with anything, technically. It didn't even matter. No, yeah. that was just something he said that wasn't even true. <laughs> yeah, just threw everyone off, and then none of it mattered anyway because the machine was only ever going to take them back to where it was said to be built or whatever. Um, it's kind of like how um, I think there's a there's an SCP about a a, a teleportation device that doesn't take into account um, momentum. So when it teleports you somewhere else, because the movement of the planets and everything like that, anything that comes out of the teleporter is like insanely dangerous and destructive. Um, mm. So yeah, it's an interesting little you know thing. Like oh yeah, we built a teleportation device. Oh shit, how do we how do we you know preserve you know momentum through the teleportation device? Oh we can't. Oh shit. Because of the Flash, I binged a lot of Batman movies recently, and I gotta say, 89 and 92 are way better than I remembered, and the Nolan trilogy doesn't hold up so well. Goya really never oh. was that good, it seems. <gasps> um, I would argue that I've come to... I mean, I always loved them, because I've watched them since I was a kid, the uh, 89 and 92, but as of recently, when you like really dig in, sometimes you're like, oh shit, actually there's more here than I even realized. Wow. Because when people were making films back then, they still were very much concerned about scripts. And themes and, and you know getting oh. the characters right and stuff and yeah ninety two especially it. like or returns neat a neat movie fucking nuts but neat have any of you watched videos from Hello Future Me his videos slash books on writing and world building are solid he would be a great guest for Rings of Power season two or if you cover the Atla Netflix adaptation next year oh that still isn't out yet I've heard people talking about that for ages. I know that there's a couple adaptations happening. I remember seeing people posting images about the uh, the One Piece one, I think. Yeah, there's that. I think there's uh, Percy Jackson is getting, like, another adaptation as a mm -hmm. TV show. Lots of those. And then, of course, How to Train Your Dragon is getting a live-action film adaptation. Yeah, I'd be on board with um, having it on. And, my God, when we get to Rings of Power Season 2, whoa, it's going to feel it's gonna feel weird almost. It's like, oh, yeah. As expected, got another. Well, I mean, we're not years. planning on doing Atla live action. We're not planning on doing coverage for the live action Avatar: The Last Airbender. I mean, I'm probably not even going to watch it, but I'll watch other people break it down. <laughs> that sounds like fun. <laughs> like ER. Yeah. Hopefully, that brings ER fully out of retirement. Not that he's in retirement, but <laughs> you know, more videos. They should have done Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. That was a great Lucasfilm project, a game from 1991. It had everything, used the age, dollar, dollar, dollar. Sure. I played Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis on well, a, our is, Mac back in the day. There is a good Dial of Destiny out there, you know? You could have made yeah, one. There's a, yeah, there's a good potential Dial of Destiny, absolutely. A very well done Dial of Destiny would be super cool. You could even have him to where, like... You could have this idea that he wants to stay in the past be like a really you, that, that can be presented in a very good way. That's very crowd pleasing and satisfying, not because he wants to just fucking die and doesn't even want to go back home. But he maybe he feels like, you know, I've done you know what I need to do in my own time. You know, I've left a legacy behind. You know, now I finally want to live through the thing that I you know enjoy so much and love so much. I've met an idol, you know, and. And that's where he wants to be for a bit. You know, I mean, there, there's a there's a way to make that work. If I could be honest, like we, you could have made the film that I think Mangold is intending to make, which is the Indy has a, a relative low point of thinking that he's got nothing to offer the modern world, but the point of the film is that he absolutely does. Obviously, we wouldn't have done it the way he did it. <laughs> we wouldn't have yep. made lots of those uh, choices. But yeah, you can easily facilitate that by you know evil villains open up a portal with the dial of destiny to get to the past to fuck it all up. He chases them in, stops them, and then he's you know he sorted it all out. Everything's good. And then it's like, well, do I need to go back? Could I not stay here? And that would be interesting. Yeah. You could do a lot with it. But you wouldn't just have his goddaughter punch him and drag him back to a place that he doesn't want to be because he wants to die. Ugh. What do you think of the idea that due to the Dial of Destiny's um, 
like I guess power or, or or something regarding what it does, its ability. Someone from the past gets stuck in modern times or contemporary times for Indiana Jones, and he meets them, and they're like the fish out of water character, and he can speak with them because he can speak Greek or Egyptian or something like that. And the the Nazis are trying to kidnap this person and find him or whatever. I think there's actually a lot we could do with that if that were maybe. Um... I don't know if we put that at the end or make the premise of the film that, but the idea, of course, is that uh, in the same vein that Indiana Jones is a living like library of all things that ever happened, and that he's finding that he's not as much useful right now, especially with, like I don't know, interest in um, astronomy. It would be interesting to have him have someone like that who is desperate for someone who can understand them, but also help them integrate. You'd be like, you know what I mean? It's like it's in the form of a person, and then you have the wider point as well. And think of the think of the cool we we could bring with a character like that from, you know, such a long time ago. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just it's the kind of thing, right? Like all three of us, the thing is like, don't make another one. But if you do, can you at least try? Try? Like, yeah. Could you give a shit? You know, if you make it, could you try? <coughs> that would be cool. If you tried. Do you guys plan on EFAT movieing the Transformers films, Michael Bay five movies, and the two reboot films? I think a Transformers arc is on the cards at some point, yeah? Maybe. Maybe. I'm not against it. I'm not against it either. Demoralization must include the destruction of Indiana Jones. PWB is the remoralization. These commies tried to do it in the same movie. What's PWB? Baby Walla Bridge. Ah, right. She's the remoralization? I mean, she's. Oh. I I would have conceded. I you know she's still portrayed as like kind of an asshole. But the film, this is one of those rare cases where the film is like, yeah, she's not great, but she's still pretty cool. When it's like, no, 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 no she's no, a no. Yeah. <laughs> bad person. She's like evil and stupid. He kills him like three times. It's insane. I know it's crazy. Gets his friend killed too. That's true. Are you guys going to watch the Clone Wars show and come to your own conclusions or not? Probably not. No, I'll take Theo's conclusion. <laughs> Are you going to come to your own conclusions? Nah. Nope. I mean, there's, there's loads of films and TV shows. That, uh, we should be allowed to, to not want to watch something. I think that's totally fine. 100%. Um, I, uh, if Fringy watched a movie and then said, no point in you seeing it, you're not going to like it, and it's certainly not like interesting or good enough in any way, I would take that over like a lot of people saying the film is really good, just because much more familiar with the taste of, of all that sort of stuff. And Theo, you know, like, I, I, it's a super controversial take, I know, but I saw, I think, a season and a half, maybe two, and then I've seen loads of clips, and I'm aware of, like, some of the events later in it, and I'm just like, I'm not going to enjoy that, and I didn't, like, of what I saw. I think that's a reasonable thing to say. Like, well, don't mean, especially when you're being asked to watch six, no, seven seasons of television. Yeah. It, oh, it's, kids like anything. Seven seasons or whatever of, of stuff that I could spend on, like, The Wire or Sopranos, which I desperately need to see at some point. Or rewatching Breaking Bad, because that show's cool. And Walter and White is my hero. Better Call Saul? Yeah, why not? You haven't even seen it. I haven't seen it, that's true. Lord Longbong of Mutlington Abbey, is there any good chance of a Kong fap of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less hmm. going on. Well, I, I played the Long Kong game. That's got to mean something, right? That, that's, that's Gotta kill for something. The Long Kong game is worth something, but it's still not Long Kong the film. It's actually which... longer Kong than the Long Kong film. It is It is longer Kong than the Long Kong, but there's still more Long Kong to watch. There is, and long. there would still be longer and Kong going on, to, to watch, course. even if we did watch the film, because we could look at the Long well, Kong no, special features. Kongs. And other cons. And other cons. Deleted scenes, extended editions, they, interviews, it, that's actually behind a point. the scenes footage. Is there an ex is there an extended and normal for uh, Long Kong? I think so. I think so because I'm I'm pretty sure that film was like three hours long. Um, that's what I remember. I think there yeah. was an extended version of it as well. Deluxe extended edition three disc set. Good God! Wow, that's a lot of discs. <laughs> is this a, one of those movies that's even when it was on DVD they had to like you had to switch out the discs so long? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Well, yeah. Maybe, might have been, yeah. Maybe when there's less going on, I suppose. Yeah. Maybe. I agree. Um, yeah, when there's less going on. Yeah. Thoughts on Lois and Clark 93 with Dean Kane. 
I liked it I as a like kid. I feel like I've only seen a few episodes of it. I haven't it's seen it since crazy. I was a youngin, so I can't remember much of it. I, re I remember it just being like a, a pretty normal television show from the 90s. Do you know, one of the only things that I remember almost vividly is one payoff where, I believe it happens in the show, is the... Uh, Clark Kent is outed as being Superman. It's like, oh no, this is terrible. What we're we gonna do? Ah! And then the end of the pay paying off at the end is the he he is standing next to Superman. Like they're two different people, and he's like, hello, and he's like, hello. Like clearly not me. He's like, yeah, we did it. We proved it. And I remember as a kid thinking, like, how? How did how did they do that? What's what's the big reveal? And the reveal is that his parents are in like an apartment building with a projector, and they projected the image of. The super bad down there, like it's like we did it. And I was just like, "How the fuck? <laughs> like what? Uh, what projector did you have that did that? It's it's ridiculous. I don't buy it. It's not even like scavenged Kryptonian technology or something. No, like I don't that. think so. <laughs> it's like, nah. It's just like we got this at Home Depot or Office Depot. Oh my god, Office someone's that uh, Doctor Deegan in the Book of Destiny. Remember that Doctor Deegan in the Book of Destiny. I remember that. That's the guy who called Lois Lewis. Lewis. They didn't care. <laughs> they were just like, yeah, that's whatever. Didn't care. Lewis. Yeah. Lewis. Hi, Fringo and all. Hi. Oh, hi. Oh, hey. Uh, have you seen the new trailer for the Futurama reboot? It actually looks decent. I have some cautious optimism for this one. Uh, we've watched the first two episodes, and it is acceptable. Give it yeah, a, it's okay. I give it a, a wobbly thumbs up. It's like it's like the thumb between the middle and it. up. Yeah, uh, would have preferred uh, if it I were mean, way would... better than that, but I accept. Of course, it could have been worse. At least for those, there'll probably be a third episode out by now, right? Hopefully, I'm I'm inclined to check them out. Um, that's 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 probably the best news out of all of it is that I'm like I wouldn't be against watching another one of those. Mm -hmm. um, I praise these days. Yeah, I praise. <laughs> Hey, Massives, I recently found out that the original actor for Jabba, before he was an alien, was from Northern Ireland. Funny that that and the Titanic are Belfast's greatest claims to fame. Alright. <laughs> Can you guys try a Northern Irish accent? I'd be interested to see you guys attempt my country's bad accent. High rags, mubes, and frongoloi. Hello! No, I, don't, I, I don't think I'll try. I, uh, I don't think I'm gonna try that one. I would need well, to know, I don't know what it sounds like. Yeah, I, I'm a, I don't, uh, even I'm like, what's the full difference between, are we talking like the people in, uh, uh, in a Sharon, the Banshees of in a Sharon, that accent? Uh, or are we talking well, no, that's, else? Northern Ireland is different, theirs is Irish, right? Northern Ireland is, uh, I've only ever heard it like a few times. I was gonna say, like, I don't think I'm familiar with Northern Irish at this point as an accent. It would have to be going by movies at this point. Like I said, I, I've just got so few references that I wouldn't even, <laughs> I wouldn't even try. I wouldn't even try an Irish accent. I don't, I don't know that that's one I would, uh, that I can do or even try to do. Man, what, I just typed in like these accent fictional characters that are Northern Irish, and I don't recognize any of these. <laughs> Daryl Brandy, Lindsay Nolan, Tom Brannock, Honor O'Neill, Jim McDonald. He's from. Those names are pretty stereotypical. I wish they wouldn't do that. Oh, Coronation Street. Uh, Hollyoaks. That's a soap opera, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of these are soap operas. Right. Well, I'm afraid we can't help you on that one. But maybe one day. Yeah, maybe. Uh, how do you guys feel about the current mismanagement of Halo? Halo's the reason Microsoft has a spot in the gaming industry, and yet it feels like they're apathetic to the franchise. They even fired the whole campaign team. Um, I mean, it's... I, I mean, what's to be said? The last ten years has been a disaster. It's just been, you know, mistake after mistake, misstep after misstep. Yeah, if you want good step content, back you're gonna play the MCC, back. you know? Loss after loss. That's a, that's a deep lore reference for... <laughs> <laughs> Halo, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's been it's been fucked. Um, at th at this point, I don't even know what it looks like to recover it. As a, I think it says a lot that um that there were so many people that were still clinging on to hope, myself included, all the way up until Halo Infinite. I think that says a lot about how much goodwill was accumulated during those first ten years of that that franchise's history. But at this point, it just I I don't know. I don't I don't think Halo Infinite can be salvaged. I think they had their chance and blew it. If if like Forge isn't even gonna rehabilitate that game, 
then yeah, they're in trouble. And I, I don't know what the next one looks like. I, I don't know what they do after Halo Infinite. I mean, um, they gotta it, they gotta try their damned hardest. Yeah, but I mean that's <laughs> ain't no room for fuck just, ups. I think. Oh yeah, but I mean three three disappointing releases. I don't know how you pull back from that, you know. Uh, and then of course Halo the television show being absolute shit. Yeah, uh, that's that's fun as well. Having that be the case. How bad could it be? It's um, getting a second season. <laughs> and and at this ca at this point, you know, as the chatter pointed out, like, oh well, you know, Xbox owes a lot to Halo in terms of its existence. But at this point, now with Bethesda and it looks like the Activision Blizzard thing's going to go through, they don't need Halo anymore. I don't think. Um, that th at this at this point, th there's probably a lot more value for Xbox as a brand to be pulled from Bethesda's IPs or whatever they're going to do with Call of Duty than they can get from Halo. You're crazy. Um, I don't think they're ever going to. Yeah. You know, like God of War is who's older, God of War or Halo? Is Halo right? Halo is older. God of War oh. was two thousand five. Halo is two thousand one. So it's like God of War is still an absolute titan for making money on these. Uh, well, releases. the is... interesting the the thing is is that God of War Ascension didn't do very well. Um, that game didn't sell very well. So you know, God of War had to essentially reclaim its relevance. The thing about that is um, interesting because me and Metal played it for the first time when he came over, and we thought it was alright. It's okay. It's like it's, uh, not, it's not a bad game. All I remember from the time was that people were just kind of bored with uh, that, like that it wasn't that people were saying it was a bad game. It's just like, yeah, this feels like doing God of War three again. That people kind of wanted something a bit different, uh, which is interesting because Gears of War also began in two thousand five, uh, has also been going, and it feels like Gears of War is not in a, a place where it's super duper relevant um yeah, like yeah. god of war is now to be fair it's been a while since the well not not that long since gears 5 um but i mean at this point i would imagine that like gears of war is a, a place that's going to be more reliable for microsoft than halo how uh, much do you is... think god of war owes its uh status right now to the writing quality of the games uh, I think it owes a good amount of it to that. I think that that's the. I think that's a, a big part of its perception as a game. Uh, is is that it's well written? That people really like the story and the characters and the world, more so than a hyper focus on the combat. Because I really wonder if it was just written like shit, but had the same combat level. It's like it would it would have to be a significantly lower level of popularity, right? It, it would only uh, make sense. I mean, well, I mean, I will say like. I don't think the Spider-Man game is even remotely as well written as uh, God of War, but like the Spider-Man game is more successful than God of War and is well regarded for its story. Mm -hmm. So, I, I, you know what I mean? Like I, I feel like I'm not, but I, I guess it's interesting because at this point Sony has cultivated the we make the you know cinematic story games, and I mean, how many people talk about Horizon super favorably as like a narrative? I I barely hear anybody talk about, about like, the story. I all just, I've ever I heard think... is people said that they don't like the characters, that they don't like Aloy. That's all I've heard. Um, but then of course you've got like Ghost of Tsushima that everybody really liked for its story too. Uncharted, same thing. But I mean, Uncharted three story is uh pretty flawed, and people still really like that. So uh, I'm not sure. I I don't know what to make of it, but I do think that a lot of God of War success is attributed uh, is attributable to the writing. Jam a man of fortune, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe he said that. Why did he say that? Why? Um. Jam a man of fortune and Jay must seek my fortune. <laughs> and what did he say the name? Because uh, it was uh. He put an S on the Avery. end of it. All right, Avery's. Avery's. Yeah. <laughs> and then he switched the six to a nine. It's, it's classic. It's so funny. Nineteen sixty four or something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like Avery from 1964 talking about his fortune on Libertalia. <laughs> Good stuff. Uh, what the yeah. fuck are you guys talking about? You'll you'll understand, Excuse don't you worry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. The, the thing about it is the this will come out after that's been seen, so it'll make sense. We'll, we'll see it on Wednesday. Oh, okay. Don't you worry, right? <laughs> oh, okay. On Wednesday. All right. How uh, exciting. <laughs> no Super Chat 234. Super Chat 234 catch up is uh, findable. Um, I think it was made after this was sent in, so it is it is available. I assume this person found it. Um, 
just search for it, you'll find it. And also, what will the Batman 2 make? Hmm. I don't mm. know. I, I don't know what to make of... I don't, I don't know. Do I don't know what... Oh, dude, I don't know mm. anymore, like, what, what the future holds for, like, there. it's been so unpredictable. Yeah, um, it is really hard to predict. This is a big problem right now. And I, the question is, how much how much damage has been dealt to the DC brand to the point that any DC thing, even the Batman, which people generally, I think, perceive as being separate, like, most people understand that, how much will that be damaged? How much does Aquaman make will be an interesting sort of a uh, test, I think. What does Aquaman's lack of success tell you about Batman, though? What do you think? Uh, I think it will be interesting to see what happens when DC's most successful film, what happens second time around. Um, because even you know, like that was I guess I guess it's hard to it's hard to pin down because some of their like Wonder Woman was successful financially. Suicide Squad, the first one, was successful financially. Of course, Justice League did very badly, and Shazam was a modest success, and then it was after that that, like, the only DC films that were successful was Batman and Joker that were totally independent. Um, maybe, maybe the more relevant piece of information is, by the time that Batman 2 comes out, by then, the DCU will have started. Yeah. And what does that mean if you have competing Batmans? Not, not competing, but, you know, two different iterations of Batman running at the same time. And uh, whatever happens with Joker 2, which I have no idea what'll happen with, uh, doesn't tell you anything about what'll happen to the others. Well, the Penguin show that they're making for uh, HBO Max, that'll what be about? interesting Happy one. Two? Uh, well, how many people watch it will be interesting, because uh, if a lot of people watch it, that's probably a really good sign. If not a lot of people watch it, it might be a bit harder to, you know, tell what that means. Do well, you sure, think but... that people sort of separate the Batman from the rest of the DC EU stuff? Like there's no like there's oh, no man. confusion. Like it's set apart from the rest in the same way that like Joker was. So the thing is is that we know that. People who pay <laughs> attention to films know that. Comic book people know that. I think a decent amount of the general audience knows that, but I also I don't know. I don't I don't like to I don't like to make assumptions that everybody is as a lot of people think the Sony, you know, films are MCU films. People think, like, Venom is part of the MCU. And he's not. Um, but, you I, know, I think that's more understandable, Technically, though. he is. That, I think it is more understandable. That's true, Rags. I, I agree with that. Um, I, I, think, I think more people than not probably know that the Batman is not part of, like, the DC EU. But what happens when we have two Batmans running concurrently, like, proper, instead of... Ben Affleck occasionally showing up every now and then. What happens when you've got the Batman 2 and the Brave and the Bold at the same time? Um, also, play know. Little Nightmares. The developers, Tarsia Studios, have teased their next game. So play Little Nightmares before it comes out, please. Maybe, at some point. I don't know. Like I said, I've seen a little bit of it. It seems neat. We deal with our own little nightmares on EFAP, so mm. I don't know if we need any more. Uh, uh, what do you think it was watching through Secret Invasion and Dial of Destiny? Those are those are our little nightmares. Let alone several hours. With them including the item of the Spear of Destiny, it feels like that was supposed to be the original item that Indy found, but Kathleen got involved and wanted the new girl, new girl, the boss bitch shit up. I, I, I'm I don't inclined know to believe to with... that um, it could be. It's, all the other Indiana Jones do, films do this. There's always a like yeah, an initial treasure cross of some Coronado kind. Cross Coronado, and uh, we have the the Cross of Coronado in uh, the Last Crusade. Mm -hmm. We have in the Raiders of the Lost Ark the what's it, the the Golden, Golden Idol. Idol? Yep, Golden Idol. In Temple of Doom, it is the remains of some ancient guy. Uh, I forget who. But... Because they just talk about it, right? They don't actually... Yeah, and I assume the point of it is, it's like we're seeing the end of a previous adventure for the sake of or... getting a nice action scene and getting into the groove, and yeah. then we see Maybe a whole Maybe how adventure. one leads into another, yeah. Kind of, that's kind of interesting now I'm thinking about, because Uncharted has a, a structure that's often the case where it's like, in pursuit of one thing, it leads to the next thing. So, looking for uh, Francis Drake's coffin, and then it turns out it's empty. That leads to El Dorado. Uh, and then, uh, 
I was about to say, I think that's the only one, actually. I was trying to think, what was it in Uncharted 2? Because it was Shangri-La to uh, get the Chintamani Stone, which then gets revealed to be something else. The twists and turns that you have in these little adventures, right? Yeah. So they're saying, yeah, like, so they assume that the film was originally going to be about the uh, Spear of Destiny, but I'm, I'm inclined to believe uh, they always intended that I don't to know, just Dial be a... of Destiny feels... Like that seems to me more likely to be the idea all along. It but who knows? Who knows? Could have been anything. Yep. Could have been that they were just gonna chill out did, in his house. Did you know? You mentioned Shangri La. Did you ever read Lost Horizon by James Hilton? No. no. It's a 1933 novel, and okay. it is, uh, as far as I know, I think that is, um, that is the like the origin the, of West origin of it. With it. I think. Um, I I think that's either the origin of it or the popularization of it. Um, this this remote place in the Tibetan mountains, uh, and a bunch of people like have a plane crash that lands them there, and you know it's about them either getting out or staying there or whatever it is. Um, but um, yeah, I it, I, I don't that's know if it's, if it's an actual like place in I, I believe in it has Eastern. some historical rooting. Uh I think that that's the general idea. It, that's the idea with all of the things in Uncharted cuz the first one was El Dorado, but then the reveal is it's not a city, it's a statue. That statue is cursed and in Uncharted 2 it was going up Shangri-La which is also called Shambhala, I believe, and it's the Chintamani yeah. stone which then is revealed to be the tree sap from the tree of life that gives people immortality. And then Uncharted 3 was um uh, in the Rubokali Desert, the Atlantis of the Sands, uh, Iram of the Pillars, and uh, and then Uncharted Four was Libertalia, the fabled uh, pirate safe haven, essentially that uh, Avery founded. But each of them ends with a little subversion. It's always not quite what it seems. My goodness. Well, except Uncharted Four had no supernatural elements, which was an interesting change of pace. One, two, three, and Golden Abyss, I think, all had some supernatural element to it. Four was just a bunch of pirates basically killed each other because they were too greedy. Ah, those pesky pirates. always thematically relevant. I've always kind of wondered. Yeah? Yeah? What were you about to say? What were you wondering about? My... Because I've always liked the original three Indiana Jones movies, and the way that they sort of dip their toe into the supernatural has kind of been interesting to me. And mm -hmm. I wonder, like, does Dial of Destiny go a bit too far with that when it comes to, like, opening time portals and things like that that'll transport you back in time? There's still this element of me that thinks that's too, like, um, overt. Uh, because even though... Great. Yeah, because the because the first two movies they were they had unnatural you know obviously supernatural elements to it whether it's the Ark eradicating the Nazis or ripping out people's hearts and um, of course with the Last Crusade you have you know the 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 Holy Grail and those are really cool and neat little artifacts that do cool things that have some root in mythology but I feel like the Dial of Destiny that a Greek guy made to predict some like phenomenon this some time phenomenon on earth is just it takes it a bit too far and makes it a bit too grandiose um i agree i think i'm pretty sure it's something that i've talked about it was either on open bar and i'm pretty sure we would have talked about it again on afab um that the idea of all of the stuff from indiana jones being rooted in some kind of like mythology um that is like traceable to the past and so usually yeah bringy yeah, localized to some extent, okay. right? The Holy Grail is an item, and uh oh, uh oh, oh no, you, have I cut off? Or can you hear um, me? You, we can now. Yes, we can. Okay. All I was saying was the the idea that uh, I I understand what you mean in the sense that the Ark is an item in a location, and the Holy Grail is this item in this location. Compared to there are rifts in space, you know, in space time that appear around the world that can be tracked with the. Like, it's it's broad in terms of its implications. It's not very localized. A lot of people um, made the argument about should Indy ever be tangled up in time travel? Like, um... um I, th I think, I think we could it's do about it the well. Exe yeah. Yes. I think well, if it was an object that... Or some... Maybe some place or some very localized phenomenon that 
Like there was an ancient temple built around that stories talked about, some long lost civilization. Uh, if we talk, you know, the fate of Atlantis or Lemuria or something like that, um, that like there some believability to the idea that it can be hidden, um, like well, the world enough, wouldn't know that, about it. I think the most I would ever push it would be like what they did in Uncharted two and three is like a lost city, uh, it, like of just sending him to a lost city. That that feels like uh, that's big enough, uh, especially as like an ending, you know, compared to traveling back in time. Um, it might also just be that, tra again, time travel is like, it just feels more science fiction than fantasy. It um, does, yeah. And Indiana um, Jones mm. felt like fantasy uh, in terms of as far as it would go. Though I guess the question is, do you think that, do you think that Indiana Jones can't have aliens as like a, as a part of the that central, was you know? The discussion for that, that at the time was, should he have aliens or not? Because it feels, they Honestly, just feel like different steps, don't they? they do. I don't, I'm not feeling aliens. No, I don't feel aliens not, either when it I'm comes not to Indiana it. Jones. It would be like if Uncharted had aliens. It would just be now, weird. It would be like, we don't do aliens. We we have like ancient, you know, rooted in mythology, typically, as uh, not not aliens. <laughs> like, I think I think the best you could do that is the kind of, like, you know, you guys know, um, uh, what's it called? Chariots of the Gods? Just, yeah. Does that ring a bell? Uh, that was an old novel from, uh, like, the seven, 60s or 70s, which kind of, I think it started off like the whole ancient aliens thing that um, aliens came to Earth a long time ago and helped us with technology and monuments and things of that nature. And a lot of our mythology <coughs> is based off of these otherworldly visitors. Um, that, you might be able to do something with that, with I Indiana Jones, like but I would, never, I would never meet I, them. I like, think, yeah, so I, th I think having a giant flying saucer it's like, ooh, I feel like we should yeah. make something that feels a little bit more magical than that. Have it be, you know, the whole, like, it's so, you know, sufficiently advanced technology just comes across as magic. But a if, flying saucer, it's like, that's like, that's science fiction, you know? <laughs> like, you're yeah, at like, if, that's science if, fiction. If we had Indiana Jones and his you know, compatriots, whoever they may be, discovering um, an alien artifact that was treated as magic by the people from a millennia ago or millennia ago if the 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 art on the the murals on the walls would depict maybe strange creatures and they sort of like drip fed you a little bit but it wasn't too overt i think that could be right at the end you know yeah maybe like right this... and you realize maybe it's aliens yeah it's imply like, yeah, it and they... have a cynical character that has explanations that maybe have a few holes in them something like that Keep it balanced. Yeah, because um, I think I think that film reveals that it's aliens very early. Uh, well, yeah, that's like, nuts. But the time you hit the end, it's fucking crazy. Yeah, it it's like crazy. yeah, alien skulls downloading knowledge, swirling around. It's like it's too overt. It's too and yes, like obviously, Ark of the Covenant was super overt at the end when it killed all the that Nazis. Was right but there was the this end. element. But it was this element of like you are messing with powers beyond your comprehension. You're doing it for evil purposes. You're not supposed to fuck around with this shit. And the Nazis did it, and they paid the price for it. There's something about that that's very mystical and neat. It's almost it's essentially it's a curse. And you well, know me, it's, it's, I uh, love a good curse. So India again, so it's Uncharted is very heavily influenced by Indiana Jones, and I think the clearest way that you can see that inspiration is that there's always a cursed aspect to what they're looking for. At first it's like, yeah, we'll get El Dorado, that's gonna be amazing, we'll get this big golden statue, and then you find out that it's cursed and it turns people into monsters. And then it's the same with like the, you know, the, the tree sap from the Tree of Life seems to turn people into twisted monsters. Like having these elements, and then the the djinn in uh, A Realm of the Pillars is like another crazy hallucinogenic kind of thing that causes people to go nuts, that usually it's like, you want something, you find out that you don't need it, you know, that you're enough, like, simply being here and doing these things and being a hero is enough. As yeah, like a Holy Grail Whereas, sort of mana kind of stuff. Holy um, Grail feels like the perfect representation of that, that he wins through fully understanding and a full appreciation and knowledge of these artifacts and a respect for them that isn't reflected in their villains, who are much more egotistical, self-serving, ignorant about these things, and then a yeah. willingness to let go of that prize because it's more important to be alive and to save the people that you care about than it is to reclaim a treasure and end up dead. Yeah, um, this pathway to, because like in the end of the Last Crusade, that whole, you know, the whole sequence in the Templar, a huge portion of it was 
it's about like you know being virtuous doing it for the right reasons you know having a knowledge of you know the base mythology you know like spelling jehovah and kneeling and tests of faith and cup of a carpenter kind of you know stuff like that that's very interesting i mean i think it's i think it's great i love it yeah um, and it's it's it, really cool and then compared to kingdom of the crystal skull gets confused because it seems like returning the skull to this place is a good thing because it means that the aliens can leave and go home but like if you stay there for too long you get punished you know what i mean like it's it's kind of strange you wanted the knowledge yeah, it's like, weird. you got it well, it's yeah, I guess a... there's that, but at the same time, it's like, but the alien gets to go home, which is like, the alien was separated, so it's like, simultaneously, you accomplish something, but then you also need to get the fuck out really quickly, otherwise you're dead. And then, of course, with the Dial of Destiny, it's like, the only reason that they got punished was because they flew too fucking low. It wasn't like, it wasn't actually like some huge mistake that they made in terms of judging uh the tool that they were after they were just really fucking incompetent well, yeah i mean like, <laughs> imagine the movie where they fly and they realize pretty quickly that this is the wrong place and they go yep turn around and they do and then they fly back and that's it exactly it's just it, that would be awkward it wouldn't feel the same as what was done with all of the other films where it's like don't look at the ark of the covenant it's not something that you're meant to look at and Indy's willingness to not gaze upon this thing that he's not meant to see is a thing that saves his life Whereas everybody else dies, and then of course, same with the, you know, understanding what the Holy Grail is, like, an understanding of uh, the mythology and all of the information. It's just, yeah, compared to Crystal Skull and Dial of Destiny, the central reveal is very confused in both instances. Hey, uh, if you don't mind pausing it for a moment, I'm going to grab a drink and I'll be right back. Harrison Ford belongs in a museum. I mean, a little bit. It's kind of unfortunate. He's been, um, he's like, like, like as is commented on, he's like pretty active when filming Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and to be fair, he's relatively active for his age in this. And it's like, man, there's an alternate timeline where we could have gotten some good stuff. Good. Good Indiana Jones films, yeah. Nobody be saying that. It's like, stop making these if they were really good. But, mm hmm. Yeah. This is a safer aspect now. Safer attitude. I still remember the days when we were just really excited to see new versions of classic IPs that we love. Yeah, bring me more. There was there was a time where I would have been thoroughly excited to see Terminator 3. And I was like, okay, that, uh -huh. that's not quite like the experience of watching the first two. That's strange. Yeah. Zero interest in this movie, but all the interest in the bloodbath that this breakdown will be. Love you, massives. Such a fascinating cultural change, isn't it? Mm. Entertainment about entertainment is the preferred entertainment. Kind of feeds into the whole React content stuff, doesn't it? The, yeah, kind of. The preference of just being with people when you consume the thing, but... You know... I mean, it's, it's, it's weird because, like, I still very much value the experience of watching films, whether or not I'm with a person. Mm. Not like, uh, we're in a world where, because, like, you know, XUC said that he believes that's the, just the straight up future where everyone's going to want to do it with everyone. The social that was, aspect. uh, South Park did that episode years ago. Commentary is the content. Well, South Park are often prophetic. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. Because PewDiePie gave them footage for that episode, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. And it was just the idea of being baffled that somebody would want to watch somebody playing Dragon Age instead of playing it. Yeah. The, the conversation of sports will come up. Yep. Naturally, uh, naturally and rightly, <laughs> I would say. Well, that's the thing. Like, there are some sports I've enjoyed in my life, but for the most part, I didn't quite get it. And then I'll happily watch someone do a playthrough of, like, Fucking Lord of Ring Golem or something. It'd be like, why? It's like, because it's funny. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, considering that the first 20 to 30 minutes is the good part, strap in, masses. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Also, high rags. Not the good part. Would you, would you even it's... would you even concede that it is the stronger part, though? Maybe. Uh... Even then, though. You know, maybe. Well, now I'm thinking about like, well, why would I say that? And it's like, I don't know. Because, mm. because it's 
a moving train and he's trying to hide from Nazis and he looks like Indy more so than super old Indy. He's like, is that why that's the best part? I don't know. Ugh. What is the best part? Maybe when the, the brief amount of time where everything's chill and they're out in the water and they go down and grab the thing yeah, and the eels are like, you. ooh, and then they go up and <laughs> cut it off there. It gets shit. Maybe that. Also, high rags. Hello, hi. The eel part could have been cut out. It was pointless. That's kind of why I was talking about how like it's like probably the best part because I mean it, it like look out for the eels and then the eels go woo and he's like whoa look at those eels. Like, yep, yeah, that. <laughs> They're Which like is weird. What um, takes. The um the part where Indy's explaining what happened to Mutt was like the best and worst part of the movie in a way because it's like the only time where he gets to act a bit, mm -hmm. you know, and, like, deliver some lines emotionally, but it's also, like, this is where you learn that Mutt went to go to war and died to spite Indy because their relationship was so shit. It's always like, like that, oh, isn't it? Every fucking oh, time. It's like, uh, thanks. Thanks. He did it because he hated me. <laughs> it's like, oh, for fuck's sake. He couldn't even be, like, off somewhere else in the world doing something nah, cool and dead. fun. No, nope, he's gotta be dead to spite Indy. Like, oh, gee, thanks. Awesome. You know That's for a fun. fact, if they were forced contractually to say he was alive, they still would have been like, why isn't he with you? Well, because he hates me. I was too controlling in his life. I kept... It's he's like, no, prison. you're not allowed to he's say that. Rapist. Say fucking anything else, please. Like, come up with a different idea, I'm begging you. Just, just... How about he's out there doing his thing? Oh, crazy. Look how fast you can say it, too. That doesn't have an emotional resonance. Yeah, I'd rather be neutral than fucking miserable. Thank you guys for watching this trash so I don't have to. No problem. You bet. I just started watching Chernobyl and reading House of Leaves, which are now two of my favorite pieces of media. Also, New Fear Unlocked, Radiation Poisoning. Yeah, yeah that's a bad one. Yeah, it's it's bad really, one. really horrible. Hear ye, O oh massives, know that there is an actual noom book out on store shelves and despair. Oh, and great greetings to Ragzimus. Oh, greetings to you. <clears throat> yeah, I see noom every once in a while. It's like, look at him noom. go. Like a noom. Uh, this movie isn't bad because in 1977, a stormtrooper ends. True, <laughs> that's true, yeah. Well, the spear is an artifact-like weapon, so checkmate, history bigots. <laughs> an artifact-like weapon. I like hmm. that. Uh, sorry, I'm not watching EFAP. I'm watching Buffy instead. I'll catch it later. Ooh. <gasps> Gadzooks. Hopefully you're enjoying it. There's a reason why movies like those made by Tom Cruise still set the bar for action scenes. Practical effects and stunts look real because they are real. CG just rips you out of the experience. Hey, there's still a uh, decent it really does. amount of CG in the Mission Impossible films. It's just that they've there's more that's real to them than a lot of films will do, for sure. Yeah, I feel like they don't rely on it. They use it to, I guess, accent the, you know, what's going uh, on. I mean, for all for all the problems that Mission Impossible has, uh, uh, Dead Reckoning, like in a way, I still respect it. But yeah, you know, yeah, I can't. I don't. I can't. Like, I don't hate it. I understand why people would, but. You know. The big question is why did Harrison Ford do this movie? He thought it was good, um, I guess. I think Harrison Ford has always preferred like the Indiana Jones character over Han Solo. That's my understanding. So I think it's a lot easier to get him to do an Indiana Jones than it is to get him to do another Star Wars movie. Yeah, but like he just I think he legitimately really likes Indiana Jones and is willing to do it, and I think Disney wanted to See if they could well, squeeze one more out of them. You know? <laughs> they want to get one more film. I guess they regret that now, probably. I guess. I think that if they didn't have Harrison Ford being on board, it wouldn't have happened. But I don't see how it could happen. They yeah. tried it with Solo and it didn't work, you know? <laughs> Trying to replace the actor. Well, of course, and I think the question was more about, like, why would he accept this instead of pushing something else? It's like, I don't know. I guess he thought Money. it was good. I don't know. I think he likes Indiana Jones. I think it's something that it he does really seem enjoys. To. Well, yeah, but Even that one could it. argue his liking <laughs> of Indiana Jones would have prevented him from making this film. 
Yeah. Um, maybe, but then again, I thought, you know, it's very likely that he just thought it would be good, and he liked the idea of it on paper. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's my assumption, yeah. is that he actually did think this story was good, that he wasn't convinced that it was bad, but... I don't know, man. A shit ton of passionate Indiana Jones fans seem to think it's the worst of five. Interesting. And not that it's good, either. Well, I'll have you know that our good friend, good friend of the channel, Organized Chaos, uh, believes that Dial of Destiny is better than Temple of Doom. That's fine. He's probably going to say it's racist and stuff. Which puts him almost into... YMS tier of Indiana Jones <laughs> rating, but oh boy. I don't well, know what it is about Indiana Jones that, that makes some people just go full tism. I was gonna say that's not that doesn't line up with YMS. YMS said Temple of Doom was the best one, right? Well, uh, in terms of the rankings of Indiana Jones movies, he's almost at that tier. Because saying that Dial of Destiny is one better than The Last Crusade is Insane in the membrane. I see. I see. Shout out to RLM for pooping on Lucas for making Indy 4 totally suitable time for this, and to Oliver Harper for saying Indy 5 better than 4 over and over. Uh, um, like I said, I, I think 4's better, but sure. Four Most people better. would argue 4's better just because of the ending, like not even considering anything else, the ending alone. Mm hmm. I believe this I mean, is... Four, is... four is really bad, but still... Yeah, four is it's bad. Better than, mm -hmm. better than Dial of Destiny. Yeah. It doesn't take a steaming dump all over Indiana Jones. So... At the end, at least. Yeah. Do you guys do shoot Super Chats? Yes. Sometimes it takes a little longer to get to them chat? than preferred, but that, uh... As you can tell, as I am reading the message, we do. Not in the mainline episodes anymore. We've evolved... I said the, uh, I was mostly inspired to do that by Brinko sort of running the, um, the two sections almost separately. It, it, it makes it more definitive instead of, like, running on until possibly going for what we used to do, right? Like, the actual 11, uh, 54 minute cap. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's long, guys. <laughs> that's a long time. To me, it makes a lot more sense. You get the show, and then the show... Sort of show plus or show after dark where plus. we talk directly to everybody. Yep. Shout out to Elsa Schneider based Oya Kodon Enjoyer? Oya Kodon? Based Oya Kodon Enjoyer. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that, what that means. Yeah, it's a mystery to me. So, the big question Jake Jones or Indiana Jake? There should be a poll. <laughs> Indiana Jake, I think I like. Indiana Jake, I like. <laughs> yeah. You think that it is like because at first, you know, at first it seems like it's all's well, but then it's like, oh, wait, no, you're not who I remember. Yeah. I think it's also just the idea that his last name is Jake. Like, <laughs> doesn't sound as know. punchy, does it? Like, yeah. Indiana Carl. Jake Jones sounds like a name, you know? That sounds like it. That's a name. Indiana Jake is weird. <laughs> that's just strange. <laughs> Uh, this isn't Indiana Jones, it's Ohio Johnson. Ohio Johnson. Oh. No. Maybe. Maybe Ohio Johnson, if they give him his own movie at some point, that'll actually be popular. Could be his distant cousin. Thanks for saving me 60 plus dollars bringing my family to this film this week. Good god, yeah. Spend it on anything else. Don't, don't go see that. In fact, just have them all sit around and watch. Uh, Raiders, or Temple of Doom, or Last Crusade. Or all of them. This whole flying through a storm time travel sounds like the movie Flight of the Navigator. Did they rip that movie off? Oh, that's wow, Fly, that's all back. I mean, uh, I, I don't think any movie would want to have been considered as having been ripped off to make this one, you know? Like, no, you didn't rip that off me, that's your own thing, whatever you do with this. Indy, you won't let me live, you won't let me die. That's how... That's, that's Indy to Disney, I'd say. Why are we defending an... <laughs> uh, why are we defending an actor, Harrison Ford, who is quite happy to crap on his own character and fuck the fans? Curious. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm never going to assume immediately that a, like an actor was like, ha, I can't wait to fuck the fans over by making this horrible project. Like, I'm willing to believe that he thought this was a good project. Um, 
Didn't they say what, he teared he up in Tan or whatever? You guys. Yeah, I mean, he may well have, right? If it's his last time playing a character that, again, like Rag said, which I agree with, it does seem like he really, really, really likes Indiana Jones more so than he likes Han Solo. I really, really like Indiana Jones. <laughs> He's really cool. I like, well, I mean, I really like Indiana Jones as well. I guess I find it fascinating that he would rather... Like, Indiana Jones is a static character, which isn't a problem, really. I mean, he has arcs, like little arcs, but compared to Han Solo, who's quite dynamic, it's kind of interesting that uh, he's not that interested in playing Han Solo. Seemingly. The real question. Did the Tuk Tuk try spinning? And was it a good trick? They did not do that. Maybe they would have won immediately if they'd tried that. They should have. They definitely should have. Watches Nazis get vaporized, hearts taken out while people are alive, and magical healing cups, but in, nah, he's still skeptical. It was a hard sell, that line, wasn't it? It's like... Yeah, that's a really hard sell. I've seen like, weird things, but I, I don't believe in magic or anything, you know? Okay, uh, alright, you do, though. I mean, you do. It'd all be right. weird if you didn't at this point. <laughs> like... Yeah. Um, the, and, and that could have been something cool that they do, is like him reconciling with all the crazy stuff that he's seen, and, you know, he's one of the people out there who's like, you know, he, he doesn't, like, screech it to the heavens because he'd be seen as a crazy person, but he's like, you know, listen, look, listen, between you and me, there's some crazy shit out there, right? You know, if you've seen what I've seen, you know, you might change your mind. Uh, hey, Mole, I've been watching ER's streams and his comments, and yikes, there's a surprisingly non-zero amount of fans who despise you uh, and think you were mean to Synthetic Man. Mean. <laughs> Synthetic Man is a foul person. Yeah, he's um, awful. Just, just, so we're, just so we're clear. Um, the funniest part is the, 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 the mean things that he said first. Yeah, it's fucking fascinating, isn't it? Like, not to mention the personal shit that he came out with, but... It's, it's funny that the appeal for him, like, a lot of people be like, yeah, 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 he says all those horrible things, but, like, I really love his opinions on uh, video gaming or, or the state of culture or industry, and it's just like, he's terrible at reviewing games. What do you mean? Like, the, his, his review of Ragnarok was awful. He didn't fucking it play it properly. awful review. A terrible review. Yeah, if, even if we took out all the anti-Semitic, anti- um, anti-gay, the, the racism, like, He's the actual thing. He is the, He is your daily reminder that those people are actually out there. They're not just a cartoon name that lefties call anyone who's to the right of them. Those people actually do. There's not many of them, I don't think, but they, they are legit out there, and they have an audience, and it is like, man, wow. It's a bit of a wake-up call in a way. Yeah, and I mean, it's nice to get old hyper-leftist every once in a while anyway. There we go. <laughs> I'm telling you, there, there was a day. We're on the same website by two different people. I was called a fascist and a libertarian. It'd be funny Such if they threw in... Because if you looked around enough, you'd probably get, like, every label out there. Just the state of the internet. Um, I mean, look, well, I mean, no bullshit, right? I mean, it was a while ago, but he's, like, you know, Rags is a known leftist. Known. <laughs> what? Known. A known that leftist. Means... Everyone knows it. That means it's more than just, that's bullshit, all right? Yeah. Not necessarily, but the other bullshit. To... <laughs> I mixed them up before. Things, but... I hate mixing Gotta those two up because they're so far away from each other. That's bullshit and uh, no bullshit. Yeah, During yeah, the yeah. console war days where it'd be like, you could simultaneously be a PlayStation fanboy and an Xbox fanboy in the same day. Well, yeah, yeah um, just based off of one thing that you said. It's like, oh, I like Halo. It's like, oh, Xbox fanboy here. was here. a broad summary of you as a person <laughs> based on that one Maybe like, uh, because critical of Snyder Cut, like Marvel fanboys. Like, really? Ah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Marvel, EFAP Marvel fanboys, come on. We're, EFAP is famous for adoring Marvel. True. So, that's really what we're known for. I believe this is further evidence people in Hollywood have no real-life experiences, i.e. real suffering or failure or threats of death. It limits their ability to tell stories, compare old stories to now. Um, it'd be curious to know, uh, like, if it, if it is truly the life experiences or if it's simply, like, a, you read enough books or if it's that you write enough and you can learn from your own sort of mistakes in writing. You know, what's the key element to making a really good writer? Who knows exactly, like but... It could be an, a combination of all of those to varying degrees, at which point I don't even know what to hone in on as, like, something that I would say, 
get more life experience or read more books. It feels like you just gain from doing all, all of practice those writing a hell of a lot more. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty. There, there are writers who are like pretty sheltered who've written good stuff. It's got to have and happened, yeah. About, well, I mean, I'll, I'll give an example. I mean, H.P. Lovecraft. That's actually was I, was there, 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 yeah. I was thinking him uh, as an example, but he he was. I mean, he was he got out and about occasionally, right? Um, eventually, eventually. Um, but his mm-hmm. mother was like actually crazy, um, and That's she kind of like in a way like abused him when he was young. She was overprotective, wouldn't let him go anywhere, so he was kind of shut in, always at home, and that kind of stuck with him. And well, eventually, he did do a bit of traveling, but you know. Yeah, he did a bit of traveling, but he always went. He went back to he, he was he from did Providence, go right? Home, yeah. Something um, like that. I can't quite remember. Um, good old New England. Yeah, he had like a wife or two, and yeah, that was part of the you know issues that they had was his, you know, being sort of locked up and wanting to I mean, stay Vincent home. Maybe, maybe one would like, argue that is a, why he was a successful writer, is because all of his writing relates to those specific experiences. Um, well, well, that's kind of the complication of, of the subject, isn't it? It depends on what kind of subject matter you're writing, right? Like, if you're doing subject matter that really delves into, like, your own consciousness, subconscious, your unconscious, like, that kind of deeply introspective, contemplative kind of uh, writing or creative expression. That's like, well, that is, you know, that's its own thing that you can benefit from a lot of uh, isolation, in a sense. Um, I mean, Vincent Van Gogh wasn't, like, a very social guy, either. And look at all the stuff that he created. It's, it seems to me that, like, the capacity to observe things meaningfully and deeply is super useful. So, like, even if somebody didn't have a lot of life experience, if they're able to observe other people or the world in a way that's deep, uh, contemplative, that, that that in and of itself is useful. Plus, I mean, of course, life experience doesn't necessarily make you good at conveying all of this through the, the methods and means of uh, whatever discipline you're doing, right? Having a lot of life experience doesn't mean that you have good, like, technique. Uh, as a writer or an artist, necessarily. So there's always going to be some amount of practice. And a lot of the time with creative stuff, practice is lonely. <laughs> like, it is it is a, it is an exercise that one does on their own. Yeah, and, and the reality is, if you're going to write something funny, you need to have familiarity with comedy. And if you're going to write something, let's say, a law procedural show, uh, that you don't know anything about the law, <laughs> then... Combine those two, and you have what happened with She-Hulk. Is self-admittedly no idea what they're doing, and that's what you end up with. Well, it's something that uh, I know that you've said a lot, Rags. But I mean, you're only a, your characters are only as smart as you are. Is an interesting statement. It is an interesting statement that's worth thinking about when it comes to writing. Yeah. It's yeah, when it comes to things like cleverness and intelligence and wit, those things are difficult to just. You can't just tell me that a character is those things. Like mm-hmm. you can if they're like, oh, the Jimmy is fast, Sarah is, you know, strong, things like that nature. You can just write those to be the case. But uh, yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit more difficult to convince me that a character is, you know, intelligent or witty or clever or wise. They could have used the Lazarus Pit and recast Indy and Marion halfway through. I don't know that, well, that would go over people... to the DC universe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people would like that. Like it's. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how that would play out. I don't know. Um, depressing thought. This is some of younger generations' only exposure to Indiana Jones as a character. <laughs> Wouldn't it be yeah, sad if they so. saw it and then they were like, I don't get the hype. <laughs> Hopefully they'll also see the uh, the massive negative reception that it got. Yeah. Harrison did most of his stunts in Indy 4, unlike 5. Yeah, that's, uh, from what I'm familiar with, he did a lot more in Indy 4 than a lot of people realize. And how much could he do in 5 at this point without yeah. risking serious injury? A black person? Ah, Seath. I assume they're talking about CIA lady. <laughs> Who got over the people getting shot real quick. That was so strange. That whole, that entire, like, thread of the plot seemed completely... Like, well, why did that even that? Why did that whole thing exist? That was like an entire subplot of those characters that just it was just not at all necessary. They got in any flushed way. I li- at like the halfway point on that random scene was just like yeah, dumb they got killed now. on the plane and they're done. And I'm like, oh, was that just to tell us that the bad guys are bad? Because I knew that. 
Uh, people made more vids talking about Indy 4 than Indy 5. Uh, maybe. I don't I don't know about that. Is that true? Does it feel like that's true? I know that Indy 5... I don't feel like that'd be true because more people are engaged in, like, you know, YouTube now than in 2008. Yeah, Not probably. to mention, of course, some, that uh, there's just this big cultural aspect of keeping an eye on films like that and talking about what they mean in meta, I think, more so than there was back then. And then, yeah. um, but I would agree that, like, Indiana F Jones 5, uh, Dial of Destiny, whatever, it's, it's, it's moved out of being discussed, like, at all. Pretty yep, much. very quickly. Obviously, we still bring it up here and there as just an example of a thing that happened that proves the pattern, but that's about it. Uh, also, say Gandalf lines in Arnie's voice and Saruman's lines in Stallone's. Oh, that's the interesting. Oh, Baggins doing, doing, uh, damn it, I'm screwing it up. Hmm, I need to get in character. Bilbo Baggins, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm do, trying do to not help you. take me for a conjure. I I don't know what's happening. I'm, I'm I'm I can't do it. I keep going back to Gandalf. Like he's he's infecting my ability to do the. Arnold you shall not pass. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, let's Run, see. you fools! Uh. <laughs> what is the? Uh, let's see. So, so Stallone's voice is more like this. Yeah. So it'd be like, Do not uh, take me for some conjurer of cheap tricks. Oh, well, that's a Gandalf line, right? Saruman lines yes. for uh, Stallone, so it'd be like... Oh, oh okay. Right. March <laughs> to Helm's Deep. <laughs> <laughs> Leave none alive. Uh, you let's... have chosen pain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and it's the Saruman quotes. Let me look up some Saruman. Now I'm quotes. just imagining Arnold Schwarzenegger spinning around on the floor in Gandalf's, you know, coat. Oh, the better timeline. <laughs> Let's see. Um, a lot of these are short. Let me see. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Man, there's a lot of these from The Hobbit too. He speak. I think he might have more lines in The Hobbit than he actually does in The Lord of the Rings. Um, you have that big. That's old absurd. Chat. No such power exists in this world. The necromancer is nothing more than a mortal man, a conjurer dabbling in black magic. I don't think he speaks that fast. <laughs> Stallone, I mean. All right. Let's see. Um, yeah, a lot of these are really kind of short and everything. And honestly, I think the the Gandalf as uh, Sylvester Stallone is, or sorry, as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is pretty. That one's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Is it just me, or do a bearded Antonio Banderas look a lot like Pedro Pascal? Wow, guess they all look alike. Oh shit! Never mind. Um, Move on. Whistle. I mean, they don't look even remotely. I was gonna say similar. not to be like not at all, but okay. <laughs> no, they look very different. Um, are you Dumbo's going to do coverage for Across the Spider-Verse? Whatever your thoughts on it, I bet it'd make for a good EFAP. DDLC 2, play it. Uh, mm. If we're covering it, it'll be when the third one's out, because there's way too many yeah. loose threads. Uh, I also yeah, think it's it, not like there's not things to talk about, but a lot of it will relate to how the story kind of gets resolved and what we learn in the next movie. Yeah. So it seems as if the next movie is probably a ways away. Mm -hmm. Probably. Just graduated from college yesterday. Wanted to thank you all for providing me relief and peace throughout my four years when I first found Muller and have been subscribed since your first channel. It's been a crazy ride, and I'm so very excited for the future. Well, you should be. C plenty of cool and amazing things are on the way, and uh, I'm glad that we can be entertaining uh, for you. But also, congratulations on the graduation. Good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Good job. Mm -hmm. You graduated. You did it. Hooray. The future is... Just over there. Go and grab it. Uh, and Kill it's my it birthday today, to. lol. Happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday to you. Isn't Dial of Destiny a great birthday present? Yay. Get Disney to buy cancer, thereby killing it. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good strategy. They try to yeah. reboot cancer and it just fucks up. And... They completely ruin the lore of cancer. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they disrespect the character. Uh, maybe Antonio put it in his contract they couldn't use him to advertise. I don't know why that would 
be the case. It's really strange that I had no clue he was in the film, though. That was that was odd. I think the first three worked because of the horror elements. I really don't think that's the factor that makes them work or not. I... No, the elements of little tinges of horror, which is really as far as they go, are are neat. But yeah, I don't think by any means those are. Yeah. I'm reading the John Carter books. They're real neat and quite humorous. It contextualizes what Avatar does with Pandora. Also, everyone's nude. Everyone. Nice. All right. Oh. You've got my vote. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Suicide Dial of Destitution. Oh. I like suicide it because it, it really rolls off the tongue, you know. Yeah. I know this could be a result of MPA rating standards, but there is such a distinct lack of horror slash brutality in this film in comparison to the OG films. Felt a bit tamer. Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, I think so. Yeah, it's hard to compare to get in the heart pulled out and all that. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Or you know, Donovan scribbling up. Yep. Behold my awesome milestone! Behold, twenty-two months of uh, membership. Oh, oh impressive. Right. Well, okay, 20, wow. 24 months will be the big old milestone, right? Two years. One year and ten months is a milestone, to be sure. But, you know, two two months. That'll be a crazy milestone. Hmm. Imagine harnessing the power to make aliens more palatable in an indie film than whatever this time doohickey was. Harnessing the power to make aliens more pat palatable. In an indie film? Oh, I thought they meant, like, an independent film. But that was, like... that. That's, that, that's what confused me for a moment there. The, the thumbnail is the funniest thing I've seen all year. Yeah, I put the indie hat on Donovan when he's, like, super old. <laughs> yeah, I think that, that captures, good. you know. <laughs> I think that's very appropriate. Illinois Jones and the Insufferable Horseface. Yeah, see, Illinois Jones, that's... I like that. <laughs> Illinois, Illinois Jones. Jones. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like a, it's like the, the, the Chinese, like the... you know, knockoff translation. Illinois, yeah, so Indiana. Jones, or, like, they just get Milwaukee. the wrong state. Wisconsin Jones. <laughs> Ohio Jones. Michigan Jones. Howdy, Massives. I've been struggling recently with finding relationships. What do I do when I find a gal who says, Captain Marvel did nothing wrong, Cruella is an excellent film, God of War is woke cringe, etc. Stay long and prosper. What? You found someone who thought God of War is woke, but that Cruella is excellent and Captain Marvel did nothing wrong. Well, you're not going to have a boring that. relationship. I was going to say, this last <laughs> sounds interesting. Just talk to her about all yeah, these opinions. Right. You know? Yeah. But, I don't know, she seems like a bit of a wild card. She might, she might, I don't know if you want to put a ring on that. You never know. Get to further, know her Further exploration is required. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta show her Lord of the Rings first. Mm-hmm. See how that goes. After Indy 5, it broke my hope in modern film. I only have Arcane to look forward to now, knowing there will uh, be good storytelling. Hey, that's no guarantee. But also, there are some things. Apparently, the... The Gran Turismo, uh, Drinko was saying that's pretty solid. Oh, okay. There's, um... Interesting concept for a video game movie. Hmm. I hear that Twisted Metal is entertaining. So, you know, we got those two. Them gaming adaptations, man, they're just flying out. Yeet. Harrison Ford is older than Uncle Albert and Granddad were when they passed away in Only Fools and Horses. It was so cringy seeing the action in these movies. This movie, sorry. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was just that's just like the fundamental reason to not make the film. Too late, but um, you know what? Sometimes they feel like it's never too late. Uh, I watched Raiders and the Last Crusade last night. I've seen them thousands of times, and they still never get old. The only other movie I've watched more is Star Trek First Contact. Bring on MI7. Oh, this is before uh, Dead Reckoning was out. Hmm. Hope you liked hmm. it, I guess. Yeah, I hope you liked it. Uh, Rewatched the first three indie films. Crusade is still a good bookend. Crystal Skull feels like DLC. This movie was Last of Us 2 minus the sweet release from a golf club. Sweet release? <laughs> I'm not going to say it's commonly not the favorite part of Last of Us 2, the golf club, but you know what? I guess yeah, I some people, uh, 
some people might describe that part of the game as putrid, mm -hmm. but, you know. They're trying to do a Wizard of Oz ending without the effort, art, or charm. Uh, also, do we really know if Indy survived? Maybe it's an Inception ending. I'm putting too much thought into this, aren't I? Maybe he just did die, and the rest of it was a hallucination. Maybe into the we grave. are the ones who are hallucinating. Speaking of new IPs, did you masses hear that the OG Crispy Critter Atomic Heart is coming out with some DLC? Any thoughts? Not I'd really. I'd be interested to see what that DLC is. Um, but, you know, I guess I don't really have any strong thoughts on it. That's not really something I plan to return to. Atomic Heart was a strange game. Okay. You're a strange game. Mola, just heard from Vito that you're being forced to stream with your friends. Blink twice if Nerdrotic is forcing you to do real BBC. That doesn't sound like something <laughs> Vito would say at all. Whatever do you mean? Forced. He's a, he's a good take machine. What are you talking about? I, um, uh, uh, so I don't know if anyone knows, Real BBC was started without me. It was uh, good old Az doing it regularly, and then uh, Nidrotic joined him. And then I offered to join them, because um, they're my friends. Just like these two are my friends. I think you're just chasing clout. That is actually you're why I did set up EFAP. Clout I was like, chasers. guys... Gotta get that clout. Gotta go clout mode. Clout goblin. That's what uh, Hassan called him, right? That's what blah. Little clout goblins. <laughs> living under the clout bridge goblins. trying to grab clout. Oh, that's trolls. Clout trolls and clout goblins are different things. Uh, hey, Fringy. Thanks so much for the Jar Jar impression. You made my week with it. Damn, I can't remember uh, <laughs> what that it was. It was really good. It was excellent. It was really good, yeah. Okay. And question, will we ever get official lore about your goo? Maybe. Hmm. Oh. But, uh, will, it, will it be like in a book, or is it going to be something online? I said maybe. Why, why wouldn't that mean there's an answer to my question? I haven't figured that out yet. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, it's fair, you know. I got a wick mate who's going to watch Bobby and Oppenheimer back-to-back. Yeah, apparently a lot of people did. <laughs> Which is mm -hmm. interesting experience, but you know. Uh, they said Spuds, McK Spuds McKenzie was the poo posh pooch of pop culture, but can he measure up to rags? I'm not posh. A posh pooch of pop culture. I'm a pooch of pop culture, I suppose, but I'm not posh. I've never been posh. I've never marketed myself as being posh. Well, if you Rumors start talking like this, well, it seems more pop. Hello there, I'm the posh pooch of pop culture. Evening, yes, gentlemen. Course. Yes, of course. You see. Implying, implying feds don't also kill civilians needlessly. I didn't say that that would never happen. I'm saying it's fucking insane that these random people that are a part of the CIA killed civilians. There's seemingly no reason For at no all. no reason, yeah. And then nothing happens. Like, yeah, well, I'm not saying federal agents or angels or anything, but like, come on, guys. Well, what's happening here? What are we doing? Streamlabs? Yep, Streamlabs got... They were attached, actually, to the big uh, catch-up episode that was, like, four hours long, so you can find that there. But uh, we'll, we'll, we hit them every once in a while alongside one of these sort of episodes. And final message this particular stream. Uh, Cotylohincus, the Permian Pinhead... This is Ooh. their uh, extinct animal of the day. All right. How does this fellow look? Uh, What's he got going on? An interesting skeleton. I mean, wow. Uh, he's unique looking. There's no denying that. Many Wait, ancient creatures are. Doesn't help you. I don't know what that is. <laughs> look at that creature. Oh, wow. That is... Oh, I can see why he went extinct. And now I provide the actual image once it finishes uploading, because my upload speed is regrettably shit. There you go. Oh, my goodness gracious. <laughs> Look at him. I like him a lot. Um, he's wow. like a turtle without a shell. A oh, my gosh. He really oh, is. He's yeah, great. he's like a turtle I love without him. a Look shell. Look at his smile. He's got a fun, goofy-looking <laughs> smile. I feel like he's I feel like, like hello, he, how are you I was doing? about to say, I feel like he's like, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hi there. <laughs> oh, I love, I sure do love swimming, if that's what I do. I sure do love walking around on the yep. floor here. 
What are you going to do today? <laughs> oh, nothing really. Just enjoy <laughs> myself. <laughs> Mike, have, have a good day. <laughs> Oh, I'm so cooking. glad that I've been introduced to this fella. Well, he's extinct, but you know what? Not extinct in our hearts. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, and so that's it. So thank you all for listening. Oh my god, that was a two-hour one. Damn. Really? Wow. Yeah. Time uh, flies when you're having fun. We, we we did get talking about a bunch of things. It was nice and fun. But hopefully, yes, that's you having a good day too, listener out there. And uh, we'll see you in whatever it is that next we see you in. But for now, bye bye. Have a good bye, everybody. See you later, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye. See you later. Bye bye. 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 B